Hi everyone, welcome to the 8D lesson of the Crow Panel ESP32 Terminal Display Series Tutorials. I'll show you how to create a temperature and humidity monitoring screen using Squareline Studio. The lesson will be divided into three parts. First, designing the UI second, modifying the example code, and third, editing the UI code. Since I've already explained in detail in previous lessons how to add the UI to the example code provided and how to modify the example code based on the board, I won't go through those steps in the second part. If you're confused, please review the content from the sixth lesson first. Now let's start with the first step, designing the UI. The software versions used in this lesson are as follows. Locate the example code for the 8th lesson in the course files. Currently, this example code directory does not contain any UI files.so. We need to design the UI first and export the UI file open Squareline Studio. These two projects were created during my lesson preparation, but to demonstrate more thoroughly, I'll create a new one. I won't go through the process of creating the UI project in detail. If you're unsure about these steps or why certain options were chosen, please refer to the content from the sixth episode. After opening the program, locate the chart component in the component panel. This is the primary component we'll be using in this lesson. First, adjust its size. Since I want to display it clearly, I'll make it as large as possible to fit the screen. After adjusting the size, let's look at the inspector panel on the right in the chart section. Find number of points. Since I want to monitor 24 hour temperature and humidity information, I'll set it to 24 points. Divide the x-axis into 24 columns and the y-axis into 50 rows. This will make the position of each data point clearer. Then open the x-axis section, set the major tick count to 24 and the minor tick count to 1, corresponding to the 24 points. Next, I'll modify the primary axis. I intend to use it to display temperature information, so I'll adjust the maximum value to 50. However, to ensure more accurate data representation for each point, I'll set the major tick count to 25 and the minor tick count to 1. Then, moving on to the secondary I axis, I need it to display humidity information. Therefore, its maximum value will remain unchanged. Again, for more accurate data representation, I'll set the major tick count to 25 and the minor tick count to 1. Now, Let's look at the chart data section.to avoid any interference from the raw data. I'll delete all but one data point.to distinguish between temperature and humidity data. I'll set the temperature data to red and the humidity data to blue. After designing the chart style, I also want to add two labels to display the specific temperature and humidity values. So, I'll place these labels above the chart. The label for temperature will match the color of the temperature curve, and I'll change its font size to 20. The humidity label will be presented in a similar manner. All right, this is the interface for temperature and humidity monitoring I desired. And now we can export the UI files for use in the example code. To export, click File. Then open Project Setting to set the save path for the project, the export path for the UI files, and the export method. Since these settings were covered in the sixth lesson, I won't elaborate on them here. After you've made the necessary settings, click Apply Changes and then Export to select Export UI Files. Once you receive the prompt indicating successful export, you can locate the required UI files based on the export path you just set. Once you find them, Copy them into the example codes folder. Now you can proceed to the second step, modifying the example code. Once opened, you'll notice that the UI header files are already included in the example code, along with the UIS running function. Additionally, this lesson involves a temperature and humidity sensor that utilizes the GPO port digital communication. Therefore, I need to connect it to the D interface on the board. To facilitate data acquisition, I'll be using the DHT library, which package installed from wiki page. For the installation method, refer to lesson 1 environment configuration. 
The DHT sensor has four pins, the SIG pin of which is connected to the GPIO port 40 of the ESP32 for signal sending and receiving. Whether ESP32 RGB screen or ESP32 SPI screen, digital pin connected to the DHT sensor is 40. So at the beginning of the code, initialize the DHT sensor and don't forget to include the DHT library. After understanding the usage of GPIO, let's see how I retrieve temperature and humidity data in the setup function. I create a timer to periodically read the temperature and humidity data. The mistimer function serves as the timer's callback with a period of 2000 mA. Before reading the data in the callback, it's crucial to use the DHT to read function first as without it. The data cannot be retrieved. The library's author mentioned this on GitHub, so it's important to follow the correct steps. Now for the final step, we'll modify the UI code to integrate the temperature and humidity data with the UI interface. Originally, the temperature and humidity information was printed through a serial port. But now I want to display it on these two labels in the UI interface dot. How do we do this? First, we'll comment out the serial printing part. Then we'll open the UI screen, see file, and locate the code related to the labels, specifically the LV label set text function. As you can see, this function is used to set the content of the labels during the initialization of the entire UI interface. Therefore, we'll need to copy it and use it in our mistimer function. The approach is quite straightforward. The first parameter is the label object, and the second is the content of the label dot. You simply need to change it to the string that I've already prepared. For the humidity label, the operation is identical. However, it's important to note that the humidity information is displayed on label 2 in the UI. Header file dot, UL find that both labels are external variables, allowing us to use them directly in the mistimer function. Now returning to the UI screen, C file, locate the code related to the chart. When working with the LVGL library, you can also refer to the documentation provided by LVGL, which includes numerous function introductions and examples. You can refer to these examples to modify your UI code here. Find the chart-related content. The upper section typically provides introductions to commonly used functions, while the lower section contains example code. Expand the first examples code where you'll find a function named setNextValue. Copy this function into the mistimer function, as I'll be using it to update the data in the chart. Open the UI screen, see file, and within the charts code, locate the name of the chart object, Weecher Tone, and replace it in the function you've just copied. Next for the charts, I axis, find Serisone. However, you'll notice that it's a local variable, so we can't directly use it in the mistimer function. Therefore, you need to make it a global variable by declaring it outside the function. Similarly, the secondary i-axis, Sirius2, also needs to be changed to a global variable. Remember, to modify the original declaration, now it's a global variable. But to use these two variables in other files, you need to declare them as external variables in the UI header file. Now, you can use these two variables in the mistimer function. The last parameter is the value to be set which is for the axis displaying temperature. Therefore, you should insert the temperature value read from the sensor here. Also, the axis for displaying humidity needs to be updated periodically. Note that humidity uses the secondary axis, which is serious to it. Change the last parameter to the humidity value. After modifying the data, don't forget to refresh the chart. Simply add the function to refresh the chart. And that's it. Another point worth noting is that in the charts code, the default data allocation does not provide enough space. Therefore, we need to modify the size of the array to create sufficient space for the data. Since I've set 24 points, I'll adjust the array size to 24 accordingly. Lastly, when designing the UI, 
we used a 24 point font size. Therefore, we need to check if this font size is enabled in the ELF comp. Filed, open the library directory. Locate the LGL configuration file, ELF comp. Open it, search for font, find font usage, then locate the macro for the 20 point font size. Set it to one to enable it. All right, all steps are now completed. Next, let's upload the code to see the results. Connect your computer using a USB-C cable. Click on Tool to configure the compilation information. If you're not sure how to configure the compilation information for different size boards, please review the content of the first lesson. After configuring the compilation information, click on Upload. The upload process can be quite lengthy. I'll speed up this part of video. Once the upload is complete, you'll see the newly designed UI interface successfully displayed on the screen. And the temperature and humidity display are also functioning properly, adjusting according to environmental changes. Well, that's it for this lesson. If you find this content helpful, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you next time.